Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this absolute value um, inequality. And basically what we have is y is greater or equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. So when graphing absolute value um, inequality, it's very similar to graphing absolute value equation, which I have the parent function over here, the table, as well as the graph. But to graph, so you're, wanna, you're pretty much we're going to be graphing absolute value equation. And then we want to uh, go ahead and test the solution to determine where we're going to shade. But before we get to that, we want to make sure, well, what type of graph? Are we get, is the line that we're, is the graph that we're going to have going to be a part of the solution or not? If it's a part of the solution, then it's solid. If it's not a part of the solution, then it's going to be dashed. And we determine that by looking at our sign. Since it's greater than or equal to, that or equal to tells us it's going to be a part of the solution. So therefore, it's going to be solid. All right. The next thing we want to do is identify all the transformations. So I have a negative 2a. And what that's going to tell me is that negative, since it's less than 0, I'm going to be reflecting. So rather than my graph being opening up, it's now going to open down. What the 2 is going to do is horizontally compress my graph. It's going to be skinnier than my parent graph over here. Then I need to look at what is my x minus 3 and my minus 2 going to affect my graph. Well, you can see that they are, they are my new coordinates of my vertex, where the parent graph, the vertex is where the graph changes direction, is at 0, 0. So now I know where my graph is shifting left or right because I know the new coordinates of the vertex. So I'm going to write down everything we have. So I'm going to say reflect um, my x-axis. And I'm going to say my new vertex is at the point 3 comma negative 2. Remember, it's x opposite of h. So x opposite of h is h right there. So that means it's going to be 3 comma negative 2. So when going to graph this, I think the easiest thing to do first is graph the vertex. So I'll go over to 3, 1, 2, 3, down 2, over 3, down 2. That's my new vertex. Now, remember my graph is opening down. But to determine if the graph is going to open um, or at what kind of case it's going to be opening at, um, what I think is very helpful to understand, since it's being multiplied by 2, is just create a table of values. Now, what's nice about the absolute value function is it's reflexive over your line. It has a line of symmetry, which is reflexes over that vertex, which the vertex goes through your line of symmetry. So my new line of symmetry is going to go through my vertex, which is that. 3 comma negative 2. So basically, what I can need to do is if I plot like two points to the left and two points, if I plot two points to the left, I can then just reflect them over to the right. So let's create a table of values here. And what we'll do is we'll just evaluate for two points. Don't need to be, don't need to do anything crazy. Um, so we already know what the vertex is, right? That's 3 comma 2. So we know that when x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 2. That's our vertex. Well, let's choose two points to the left, because that seems pretty simple. 2 and 1. Actually, OK, yeah, let's just do 2 and 1. That's fine. And then we'll do two points to the right, which would be 4 and 5. But again, we only need to evaluate for two of them. So again, remember, when evaluating points, all I'm simply going to do is plug in my value. Now, I'm going to convert this back to an equation, because I want to find the value of y. So x. Um, so instead of 3, I'm going to plug in 2 minus 3 minus 2. Now, to make this go a little bit quicker, I'm going to kind of do this in my head, but I'll talk my way through it. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So when x equals 2, y equals negative 4. So I go over 2, down 4. OK? And you could also do that by looking at how this, instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1, up 2. But I'll leave that for your teacher or anything else to kind of explain. Um, then the next one is let's do 1. y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of 1 minus 3 minus 2. Now again, let's do it again. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Um, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So at 1, I'm going to go down to negative 6. So now, ladies and gentlemen, all I can do is, since these are on the exact same side, but on the other side, I can now go and plot those. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So over 4, I go down 4. Over 6, or over 5, I go down, down 6. So then I can just simply go ahead and graph. And that is how you, oh. God, I almost want to, I was doing equations before this. So we got to go and test our solution. Now, the easiest way to test our solution is to choose a point that's not on our graph. Well, 
Since 0, 0 is not on our graph, I would say that's going to be our best solution to choose. So to test this, all we're simply going to do is plug 0 in for 0 into our inequality. Don't worry about the equation. Plug it into your inequality to determine if it's going to be true or not. So I have negative 2 times 0 minus 3, put parentheses around it, absolute value minus 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 8? Yes, that's true. That means this point is true. And if the point outside of the absolute value um, equation is true, that means all the points outside are going to be true. So we're going to shade all the way on the outside. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, graph an absolute value equation. Thanks.